Okay, today at this uh, last lecture, I'd like to talk to you about Bible earthquakes or earthquakes of the Bible. The land of the Bible is a, is a region that's full of earthquakes. And you can see on this map, the uh, tectonic map of the Holy Land and the Middle East, you can see uh, the, the region. The region is accompanied by the Dead Sea Transform Fault, the Dead Sea Transform Fault, right in here, see it running north-south through the Holy Land, from the Dead Sea up through the Sea of Galilee, up into Lebanon and Turkey. And that uh, Dead Sea Transform Fault is the main site of the uh, of the earthquakes associated with the, uh, the Holy Land. We have terminology. The Hebrew word rosh is a shaking or even a roar sound. It's an audible kind of uh, understanding of an earthquake. The Greek word seismos is a shaking or commo commotion or a storm, and it could even be referred to like the, uh, the um, storm on the Sea of Galilee. The themes associated with uh, the, the ra'ash the, in Hebrew and seismos in Greek are judgment, deliverance, and communication. You might think about, uh, as you read the earthquake uh, accounts, they're usually mentioned with uh, one or two of these themes, sometimes three. Judgment, deliverance, and communication. That's uh, the understanding of why. The message, God both speaks and acts in history. For example, um, it, God is not just like the Wizard of Oz. Uh, he makes a lot of noise and is sitting behind a curtain and pulling a whole bunch of levers. Uh, God uh, is actually involved in history. And so the historical involvement in geologic process and tectonic process by the by using earthquakes as part of the message of the Bible. God not only speaks, but he authenticates what he speaks. And then their view to signs of the time, these are the beginning of birth pangs, the, the statement of Jesus, Matthew 24. These are the beginning of birth pangs, earthquakes. And then the motif, there's a giant motif that's developed in the Bible around earthquakes. Uh, it's, it's a colossal theme that is uh, um, um, taken up frequently by Bible writers, the seismic theophany motif. How's that for some fancy uh, uh, theological understanding? Uh, Joel chapter 2, Isaiah chapter 24, Zechariah 14. Um, the, uh, when God comes down, it's going to be associated, his coming, with an earthquake. And uh, Joel 2, Isaiah uh, 24, uh, Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14, when Messiah comes to the, to the Mount of Olives, the Mount of Olives will be cleaved half to the north, half to the south. Uh, and then uh, the land will be lifted up on its site. Jerusalem will be lifted up. And uh, Zechariah 14, 10. Uh, you shall flee as you fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. So uh, that this seismic theophany motif is in scripture. And we might talk and remember how that's happened. And uh, ultimately, the eschaton, the ultimate uh, 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 re redemption of creation, we're going to receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken. OK. Bible earthquakes, they're described in the Bible, of course. There's displacements observed in geologic features that may be referenced to uh, Bible events, uh, like uh, Grand Canyon, features like that, I'll suggest. Damage seen in archaeological excavations that might reflect on Bible earthquakes, and then disturbances within Dead Sea sediment layers. I'll talk about the Dead Sea sediment layers as recording a record of earthquakes associated with uh, Bible events. Here's my s seven greatest earthquakes of the Bible. Creation Week Day 3, several thousand years ago. 
um, on day three, what happened? He gathered together the waters into one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. The gathering together of waters he called seas and the dry land, okay, and that day three of creation week. The global flood, um, Genesis flood, uh, Sodom Gomorrah might be, is on my list of seven. Uh, Mount Sinai and the giving of the law, about 1,000 450 B.C. on Sinai, what happened? Moses went up and the earth uh, uh, quaked and there was uh, um, a, a seismic event associated with the giving of the law. Amos's earthquake, 750 B.C., there's a significant earthquake uh, at the time of the appearance of the writing prophets and during Uzziah's reign there was a big earthquake. And then uh, Qumran earthquake, uh, 31 BC. It's not mentioned in the Bible, but its presence has been understood, and it's the historic context for the writing of the New Testament. So uh, uh, earthquakes, famines, and pestilences were seen as signs of the times, and uh, they were thinking about the coming of the Lord. And then the crucifixion earthquake, April 333 AD. That's a uh, on my list of seven greatest earthquakes. Let's talk about uh, some of those er early earthquakes uh, associated with Creation Week. Grand Canyon basement rocks and Grand Canyon flood strata and Grand Canyon plateau uplift, all of that has something to do with uh, global tectonics. The basement rocks, you can see the tilted uh, a strata in the bottom of Grand Canyon. What is that relate? What what's that associated with? Probably with flood tectonics. And then we've talked about the strata of Grand Canyon being some kind of uh, the flood deposits, the 4,000 feet of flat lying layers. Grand Canyon basement rocks. Uh, we have uh, Zoaster granite, Vishnu schist, and we have uh, on top of those those uh, early buried strata probably re represent uh, Creation Week and early uh, strata. And then there's probably pre-flood ocean floor sitting there. And then there's there's rock that's uh, deposited by the flood, and so there's a tectonic upheaval associated with the. Uh, breaking up of the fountains of the deep. Something like that is associated with these strata. And then Grand Canyon uh, Plateau uplift. The plateau is, uh, of the Colorado Plateau is a quarter million square mile area. And that's uh, lifted, what, a mile and a half above sea level. OK, so that's big uh, tectonics and big displacements. And obviously uh, associated with earthquakes. Grand Canyon provides evidence of tectonic events associated with Creation Week and the global flood. I think that needs to be stated and as we look at the earth and understand its formation from the framework of scripture, that comes to mind. Damage seen in archeological excavations, excavations like at the southeast of the Dead Sea in Jordan, excavations in the upper Jordan Valley, like uh, north of the Sea of Galilee, and then excavations in the Judean foothills, like east or west of Jerusalem. Those are some things to talk about. Here's uh, one of the sites called Babadra. Babadra is a site along a highway uh, going uh, from the, the Valley of the Fault and Dead Sea up to Carrick. And here's Wadi Carrick, and you can see this elliptical site right here. That's the site of Babadra, and that's been excavated in earlier years. And that excavation showed uh, what appear to be burned strata and broken uh, and strata. But you can see back of the, uh, uh, the site on the western side, there's the Dead Sea down there. Southeast of the corner of the Dead Sea, Babadra is this uh, has this walled city. And the walled city looks like it's been hit by an earthquake, and uh, here's the site of the south wall, and you can see symmetrical collapse. It was a wall about 20 feet wide, and it looked like symmetrical collapse. 
that, uh, that seems to me to be evidence of an earthquake. Uh, battering rams from armies wouldn't do that, and uh, it would not uh, naturally form that way without earthquake. So collapse debris of the south wall of Babadra might be associated with the what? Maybe Sodom Gomorrah event, possibly. Okay, that's something to think about, and I I'm, want to do more work on that, but it looks like some of those cities were knocked down and burned. An unusual scripture, Zechariah 14, verse 4 and 5, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley and half of the mountain moving north and half moving south. You will flee by my mountain valley. You will flee as you f fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. That's Zechariah 14, 14, 4 and 5. And um, isn't that interesting? I was reading this verse in a class uh, in 1977 to some uh, uh, archaeology and history students. And uh, when I got to that passage, you will flee by my mountain valley. You will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah. I said, that must have been a big earthquake. Uh, kind of a quip as I, was, uh, as I was giving a lecture. And I said, man, that must have been a big earthquake because Zechariah is writing after the exile, the return of the exiles after the 70 years of captivity. And he's writing 230 years after the, uh, uh, the event described uh, in the days of King Uzziah. I remember talking to students and saying, how many of you remember anybody talking to you about the San Francisco earthquake of uh, 1906? And nobody could raise their hand. But in the, the context of this statement, everybody 230 years later remembered what? The earthquake in the days of Uzziah. So that was, it must have been a major earthquake. I said something like that. That was a big earthquake. And then one of the students got up and said, hey, I'm going to Jerusalem and I'm studying uh, at the Institute for Holy Land Studies and I want to uh, investigate the, the days of, Uz of uh, Isaiah. And so that's going to be the historic uh, specialty uh, I'm working on. And so I'll let you know what I find. And uh, so... So I said, somebody ought to go to Israel and check it out and look for it, and here's my st the student. Well, most students, you know, you, when you have a student like that, you say, blessings on you, go and, uh, and get your education, and you don't expect to hear back from them, and, uh, and, and uh, sometimes they don't say and do what you, uh, they said they would do. Well, anyway, this student named Gordon Franz would write me every six months about archaeological sites where he was seeing cracked rock and he was talking to me and, and asking me for my evaluation. And he would talk to dig directors uh, about it. And so he started uh, finding earthquake evidence, I thought, in what's called iron 2B strata. And so uh, at, after about... Um, well, after 10 or 15 years, we had a long bibliography, and he became uh, uh, very influential and, uh, in, in his studies. And so Gordon Franz and I, with a professor at San Diego State, wrote an article called Amos's Earthquake, an Extraordinary Middle East Seismic Event of 750 BC. There's the, uh, the journal article. And we, we wrote about it, and we included a bunch of earthquake damage from, from Amos's time. The deformed wall at Hotsor, the dig director uh, 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 noted that there was a leaning wall in this, uh, um, at this level, level uh, in, in, uh, um, uh, in, in the stratum, the iron 2B stratum, and it dated to about 750 BC, the time of Uzziah and the time of Amos. And so this is uh, interesting uh, and, and was recognized by Yadin, the excavator, to be earthquake evidence. 
Um, then there was discovery and digging going on at the outer wall, the north side of Ge uh, the Tel Gezer. Gezer is one of the foothill cities on the eastern side, western side of Jerusalem down by uh, Tel Aviv. Anyway, Tel Gezer, the, the Gezer excavations show this interesting displacement of the rocks. And you see the, the rocks on the wall, like there. That, uh, th those ashlars are displaced off their foundation. And then you look, you can see the rest of the wall is sitting inclined, and then the top of the wall has fallen backwards into the city. It looks like a gigantic uh, shaking and collapse of the wall. And, the, and Bill Deaver, the excavator, uh, commented on this in one of his journals. It looks like uh, an earthquake, and he assigned it to about 750 BC. Then uh, Ein Haseva, Ein Haseva, south of the Dead Sea, was a fortress built in Uzziah's time because it has a, a gate with a chambered gate, and that uh, fortress has Israelite style. But look at this, it has cracked blocks in the uh, foundation. And the foundation failure uh, shows you that it's a, a, a leaning pier in the tower or, or the, uh, the gate. And so this leaning structure is best understood to be earthquake evidence. And you can see that some of the damage associated with that. Well, there's a lot of earthquake uh, uh, sites uh, in mid 8th century BC, but there's the Book of Amos. The outline of the Book of Amos, the extraordinary speech of the rancher farmer from Tekoa, Tekoa to the rich and affluent leaders of Israel. And of course he says, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. And what is Book of Amos about? It's about the judgment of God coming on the nation of Israel. But it's not on the, the people of Israel, it's on the land of Israel. And if you do a study of Amos, you can see the... Uh, uh, the nature of the uh, of of the judgment delivered. Anyway, um, the, the final vision is the vision of a collapsing temple, and it sounds like an earthquake. And and uh, of course, the preamble and the superscript of the book of Amos is really interesting. Um, the superscript says what? In the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, during the days of Jeroboam, king of Israel the vision of Amos of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel two years before the earthquake. And so the book of Amos is dated by the earthquake. And uh, so the, um, um, many uh, Bible scholars are understanding Amos to contain a lot of earthquake imagery. The book superscript describes earthquake. Amos 1-2, a seismic theophany motif because Joel picks that up, and he quotes the, uh, the preamble to the book of Amos and adds a seismic theme to it. The, uh, God's actions are directed at the earth, um, Amos 2.13, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, Bethel's altars and houses are going to be uh, destroyed. The surviving relatives among the dead will uh, say, hush, we dare not mention the word of the Lord because it's obvious it wasn't an invading army that destroyed the cities. It was, uh, the, uh, uh, it was a, uh, some, some other event, like an earthquake. Uh, God breaks in pieces the big and little houses, the trembling and heaving and subsiding imagery in the book of Amos and the vision of the collapsing temple. The last... Uh, uh, um, evidence of in Amos is uh, Amos 2.13. It describes what it is that God is going to do to Israel. Behold, I am weighted down beneath you as a wagon is weighted down when filled with sheaves. That's the New American Standard. Okay, but uh, if you look at NIV, then now then I will crush you as a cart crushes when loaded with grain. An interesting uh, um, uh, translation. 
How about a better translation? Because in the original Hebrew, there's under you. I will not crush you, but under you. So now then I will crush under you. What? The ground as a cart crushes what? The ground when loaded with grain. And so that, uh, that translation can be offered. So Amos is um, understood to be an earthquake, uh, the earthquake theme. The earthquake sits about 750 to 760 BC, somewhere in there. And then um, it, there's turmoil in the succession of kings. And of course, uh, 30 years later, less than 30 years later, 20 years later, uh, there's, uh, um, uh, there's the last king of Israel, Hosea, and then Israel's into captivity, 723 B.C. Do you know what size that was? I think about magnitude 7.8 to 8, something like that. Who wrote the superscript of the book of Amos? I went to David Noel Friedman. David Noel Friedman was Judaic Studies professor at uh, San Diego State, or San Diego, University of California, San Diego. I took him out to lunch and asked him who wrote the superscript of the book of Amos. And you know what he said? He said, Isaiah. And uh, I said back to him, which Isaiah? Isaiah 1, 2, or 3. You know, you've written about there's three Isaiahs that and the, the, the document of Isaiah was redacted in the, uh, after the exile to bring help uh, establish uh, Jewish culture back in uh, Israel. And uh, which of those Isaiahs wrote the superscript to Amos? And he said, we've been fooling ourselves. There's only one Isaiah. And so he uh, denounced his earlier explanations of of uh, the writing of Isaiah, and he said Isaiah was the disciple of Amos, and the style of Amos and the is re reflected in the, the, his disciple Amos, and uh, that led to some interesting discussions because Amos cites the book of Deuteronomy liberally, and he had written that the the, the Torah was redacted. Uh, and uh, after the exile. And uh, many, uh, that was a popular theory. And so how could Amos be quoting a document was, which was no, uh, not in existence? Obviously, he said, we were fooling ourselves. There's, there, uh, the, the Torah was in existence before the uh, exile. Uh, mikvaot is a ritual pool, and you see these things in Israel, um, the Holy Land, and, and so ritual uh, purification, that kind of thing. Here's the mikvaot at Qumran. That's the village where the Dead Sea Scrolls are buried. And you see this fault offset. It's thought to be the earthquake of 31 BC. That's the earthquake described in Josephus, spring of, of 31 BC. The, uh, the, the, the stairway into the mikvaot this, uh, this ritual bath has been offset by earthquake over one foot of uh, shifting of the archaeological structure. And uh, that is a big earthquake. The length of the uh, fault damage, the rupture length, is about 100 kilometers on the western side of the Dead Sea going north to Jericho. So uh, this earthquake that... Uh, uh, devastated the village of Qumran is probably part of a really long uh, uh, earthquake event, and so it's probably magnitude seven earthquake that uh, took out uh, the uh, the village of Qumran and cut the um, and caused damage to the water source and spring likely. Okay, well I'm interested in Dead Sea mud, and there's you see the Dead Sea. And uh, here's uh, the image of the Dead Sea. And I've spent my time studying the mud of the Dead Sea at Ein Feshka, at Wadi Darga, and Gedi, and uh, down at Wadi Zelam, and also on the Lisan Peninsula. Those are the areas where I've studied uh, mud. And you see this northern basin is uh, 
been drawn down lately in the last uh, 50 years because of agricultural use. Anyway, but studying, uh, that leaves the, the mud exposed along the edge of the Dead Sea. And so I've been studying the mud in gullies. And this is a, at, 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 in Getty, a core that was drilled uh, about uh, 20 feet depth into the mud, and next to it is a gully. And so I've studied the gully and I've studied the, the core. And um, dating of fragments by C14 puts an approximate date on some of these things. So there's earthquakes uh, in recent time, 1927, going down into uh, 1458 AD. And then down about five feet is 1,000 years ago. And then uh, down about 10 feet is the earthquakes of about 2,000 years ago. There's a 31 BC earthquake, and there's a 33 AD earthquake, or something closely assigned about 33 AD. So I assume that's the earthquake at the cross. There's Herod's earthquake of 31 BC, described in Josephus. And down below there is Amos's earthquake, 750 BC. And there's also an earthquake about uh, 1010 BC, another earthquake about 1400 BC. Could that be what? Uh, Jericho, possibly. And then uh, there's also an earthquake down about 2050 BC. And that's I've, what I've sketched from the core. That, that possibly could be uh, the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. So I'm studying mud, and here's what you see uh, Dead Sea mud looks like. It's called laminite. Let's look how laminated it is. And when you see it, it uh, it's, it's very, uh, um, very detailed in its lamination. Here you can see the laminations, and where you see these stirred up and contorted layers, that's caused by a certain type of earthquake wave. And so that's a seismite. That's the seismic evidence. Here's a real big one right here. Looks like uh, uh, almost uh, an inch thick, and it goes over the, through the whole uh, line of the outcrop. And so those are the things that we spend our time studying. And this leads to the notion that uh, the earthquake disturbance layers are preserved. Here's how it is. Laminated sediment is deposited. Then the earthquake wave comes through and it shakes the sediment water interface and liquefies the sediment, deforms it, crinkles it, does whatever it does. And then it, it, the earthquake is finished and then more laminated sediment comes on top and that's how it makes these seismites. Here's the real detail. And uh, boy, they have some real good detail. On the nature of the stirring or the, and the thickness, you can get some idea of the seismic intensity or the acceleration at the site. The, the mud layer that's disturbed is called a seismite, a mud layer which has been deformed by earthquake. And the seismites are really interesting. They have kind of a, kind of a story to tell. You can, you can see what happened at this particular site. The, uh, the earthquake came up to the surface and broke the, the continuity of the laminae, and then it really broke them and brecciated the laminae, and then as the earthquake stirred, there was a mud layer, a final mud layer that was suspended and then landed to make the seismite. That's the kind of the interesting evidence. Okay, so uh, Bible earthquakes could be seen in Dead Sea sediment core, and especially these gullies, the gullies along the, the shore. This one at the southeast corner of the Dead Sea, this is where I'm uh, studying, one of these gullies right here. And uh, so that, that's ongoing study. And uh, there are, uh, there's 30 feet of exposure in one gully that I'm studying. And uh, I think I penetrate all the way back to Abraham's time. So it'd be interesting to study. And there's, here's uh, 31 BC, looks like there's 33 AD up there. You can see a little bit more of what that was like. Uh, plus or minus five years, I think, would be the dating on this relative to what's underneath it. 
and uh, w you know what was the earthquake at the cross like? Uh, if it was an earthquake directly under Jerusalem, then I can tell you what it was like. Uh, I've been on an epicenter of earthquake twice, and so when the earthquake comes, you hear you feel all the waves. And uh, Doug has been on the epicenter of earthquake. He knows what it feels like. But anyway, the the earthquake. Uh, sounds like a cannon going off, essentially. And then what happens is you hear the earthquake going away. If, if that was the case, I can see why the, uh, the centurion would say, surely this man was a son of God when he saw the, the synchronization of the events at the cross. The darkening of the sky, the earthquake, the uh, uh, te te veil of the temple being torn, and then it was simultaneous with the beginning of a lunar eclipse. And so all of that, uh, the earthquake uh, associated with the cross. And of course, there's an earthquake associated with the resurrection of Christ at the tomb three days later. Okay, Jesus talked about earthquakes uh, in the uh, uh, Olivet Discourse. Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceive you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of war, you will s but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end sh is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pangs. That's uh, Matthew 24, 4 through 8. And um, when Jesus says uh, these are the beginning of birth pangs, many have interpreted that to be some type of earthquake sign preceding Christ's coming. Well, I don't think there's a, a strong earthquake sign in that context. I think those are the non-signs to, uh, to do the, um, to precede the real signs. But Hal Lindsey in his book, he says there's a, a continuous increase in earthquakes. History shows a number of killer quakes remain fairly constant. And then it rose uh, 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 in the 70s, there were 51 in the 80s or as, uh, 86 and in the 90s, 96, there have been more than 150 earthquakes. And so the, uh, I don't think he's playing fat, uh, right with his data. And Grant Jeffries also has similar statements about we're living in a time of increasing frequency and intensity of earthquakes. So I plotted earthquake frequency and intensity over the 20th century through the 20th century with a, a a uniformly calibrated database, and it suggests that there's some type of 35-year cycle in the frequency of earthquake, of big earthquakes, but it's slightly declining. I've drawn the best fit horizontal line through the, or a best fit linear line through the data, and slightly decreasing. From 1900, when we, we got earthquakes uh, seismographs going, through the 20th century, a slight decrease. And that's, uh, that, that seems to be the, the best interpretation of earthquakes, declining tectonics with time since the, the flood was not long ago. Uh, that was magnitude seven in larger earthquakes. Here's magnitude 6.5 and greater. We have a good database from about 1931 through the 20th century, and what do you see there? The same kind of thing. More cyclic uh, activity and, and, and a general overall decreasing trend. So big earthquakes appear to be decreasing in frequency and intensity through the 20th century and are not an earthquake sign. But there may be earthquake signs in the book of Revelation I'm not going to deny that. And then here's the frequency of magnitude 5.0 earthquakes. And, uh, and since 1975, we've got a complete catalog of magnitude 5 earthquakes, and there appears to be a declining trend there. So big earthquakes are declining in frequency and intensity, which agrees with my view of what, te what tectonics is like through time. Here's what we've learned. We've talked about uh, many prophecy teachers affirm a pronounced increase in the frequency and intensity of earthquakes in the 20th century, 
but global and regional data, earthquake data, indicate decrease in the frequency and intensity of 27, uh, 20th century earthquakes. And regionally, earthquakes appear to be in a lull. Okay, and there are, there are regions which we are wondering when are we going to have more earthquakes, like California. Uh, we haven't had a big earthquake in California in a long time. And we think the, uh, the cycle of, uh, should be something like a big earthquake every 150 years. So uh, there's no earthquake sign being worked out. Kind of The earthquake deaths worldwide are not significantly higher than earlier centuries. We're actually building better buildings. Earthquakes don't pe kill people. Buildings kill people. But in the future, there'll be a big earthquake. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12 says, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. And Armageddon earthquake, that's what I call it, something like that. There'll be an earthquake in the future. So here's my uh, uh, finish on Bible earthquakes, conclusion. They're described in the Bible. There's a displacements observed in geologic features. So there's geologic evidence of Bible earthquakes. There's damage seen in archaeological sites, which it appears can be calibrated with uh, Bible earthquakes. And um, that uh, 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 might relate to earthquakes like Sodom and Gomorrah, like uh, the earthquake at uh, uh, Herod's earthquake, 31 BC, and also the earthquake at uh, uh, associated with the writing a book of Amos, what I call Amos's earthquake. It's about 750 BC, and then we see disturbances in Dead Sea sediment layers. That's my lecture. <laughs>